Hi my dear students welcome back to the class so far we were discussing about three dimensional geometry we said that we can represent any point or anything in space using the three dimensional plane x axis y axis and z axis also we learned that for any line joining two fixed points we can easily find the direction cosines of those two line those line so whenever we are given with or we are provided with a line we can easily find the direction ratios and direction cosines of the line with respect to the x axis y axis and z axis also we learned the relationship between the direction cosines as l square plus m square plus n square is equal to 1 today we are going to discuss the exercise 11.1 and without any further intro let us move on to it question number one if a line makes angles 90 degree 135 degree and 45 degree with x axis y axis and z axis respectively find its direction cosine so we are asked to find the direction cosines of the uh, line which makes angles with respect to x axis y axis and z axis respectively as 90 degree 135 degree and finally 45 degree right so we have to find the direction cosines of the line which makes angles 90 degree 135 degree and 45 degree with respect to x axis y axis and z axis easily we can find out cos 90 degree is equal to l cos 135 degree is equal to m and cos 45 degree is equal to n now l is equal to cos 90 degree is equal to nothing but 0 m is equal to cos 135 degree we, we know that cos 135 degree can be represented as cos 90 plus 45 degree right 90 degree plus 45 degree which comes in the second coordinate actually this is 90 degree correspond this is the segment corresponding or the sector corresponding to 90 degree so 90 degree plus 45 degree lies here and the trigonometric ratio used here is cosine here we have sine and it, uh, reciprocal is positive here we have tan and its reciprocal are positive here we have cos and its reciprocal is positive here we have all positive here our value lies here and the ratio used is cosine so it will become minus sine 45 degree or we have 90 degree pi by 2 plus x ratio cos mari sine either and our point or the angle lies in the second quadrant here only sine is positive but we are taking the trigonometric ratio cos so the sine will be minus so minus sine 45 degree which is minus 1 by root 2 now at the last so this is m is equal to minus 1 by root 2 and finally n is equal to cos 45 degree which is 1 by root 2 so that's it the answer for this question if you have any doubt in remembering this result that is first quadrant we have all positive and in the second quadrant we have sine and cosec positive and in the third quadrant we have tan and cot positive and in the fourth quadrant we have cos and sec positive if you have any doubt in remembering or if you are still confused of these signs just remember these codes all silver t cups see first quadrant all positive second quadrant silver means first letter comes to for sine sine and its reciprocal positive t first letter for tan and its reciprocal positive and in the fourth quadrant cups first letter is c which means cos and c is positive so remember this code all silver t cups which will enable to you enable you to remember this thing very easily so that you can be precise on the signs of different trigonometric ratios in different quadrants so whatever it is that's the answer for this first question now we shall move to the second question coming on to the second question the second question is find the direction cosines of a line which makes equal angles with the coordinate axis so we have to find the direction cosines of a line which makes equal angles with the coordinate axis see here the angles are the same so the direction cosines will be l is equal to cos let alpha be the angle m is equal to again cos alpha be the direction cosine and n is also nothing but cos alpha since every time the line makes equal angle with the coordinate axis means the angles are same so we took the same angle alpha that's it now we know l square plus 
m square plus n square is equal to 1. Right. That means cos square alpha plus cos square alpha plus cos square alpha is equal to 1 because L and M, L, M, N are respectively cos alpha, cos alpha, cos alpha. Which implies 3 cos alpha is equal to cos square alpha is equal to 1 which implies cos square alpha is equal to 1 by 3 which implies cos alpha is equal to plus or minus 1 by root 3. So the direction cosines are respectively plus or minus 1 by root 3. Therefore we have L is equal to plus or minus 1 by root 3. M is equal to plus or minus 1 by root 3. And finally N is equal to plus or minus 1 by root 3 will be the direction cosines of the line which makes equal angles with the coordinate axis. Now we shall move to the third question. Coming on to the third question which is also a very simple question. The question is if a line has the direction ratios minus 18, 12, minus 18, 12 and minus 4 then what are its direction cosines? So we are given with the direction ratios of the line and it is given as minus 18, 12 and minus 4 respectively. We have to find the direction cosines. We know that if A, B, C are the direction ratios of a line, then direction cosines are 1 by, sorry, A by square root of A square plus B square plus C square. Here we are taking only positive sign. And next one is b by rho square root of a square plus b square plus c square and c by square root of a square plus b square plus c square, isn't it? So we have here the direction cosines are what? First one is minus 18, minus 18 divided by square root of a square minus 18 square plus 12 square plus minus 4 square and the next one is this is L and the next one is M which is 12 divided by square root of minus 18 square plus 12 square plus minus 4 square and last one N is nothing but minus 4 divided by square root of 18 square plus 12 square plus minus 4 square right that is L is equal to minus 18 divided by square root of this is nothing but after calculation you will get it as 22. M is equal to 12 by 22. Again N is equal to minus 4 by 22. You can simplify it. This is equal to minus 9 by 11. This is equal to 6 by 11. And finally this is equal to minus 2 by 11. So these are the respective direction cosines L, M and N. No, we shall, it is it is a very easy question so we can move to the next question without any further explanation coming on to the fourth question the fourth question is show that the points triplet on a 2 3 4 minus 1 2 1 sorry minus 1 minus 2 1 and 5 8 7 are collinear so we have to show that these three points are collinear right in order to show that three points say A, B, C are collinear, we know that the direction ratios. In the previous class, we have learned a method to show that whether three points are collinear or not. That is, the direction ratios of A, B must be proportional to, must be proportional to direction ratios of B, C. Right. So, we can easily find the direction ratios of A, B and A direction ratios of BC first and then we can check whether it is proportional or not. Direction ratios of AB. We know that whenever we are given with two points X1, Y1 and Z1, X2, Y2 and Z2. The direction ratio, sorry, the direction ratios. The direction ratios are nothing but X2 minus X1 y2 minus y1 and z2 minus z1. Alle, now we have vector formula and vector component form. We have to do component. Respective components are a, b, and the vector and the b terminal point. The vector and the component form is nothing but x2 minus x1 i cap. Right. So the direction ratios are the respective components x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1. Right. So the direction ratios of a, b is minus 1 minus 2 is equal to minus 3 minus 2 minus 3 equal to minus 5 1 minus 4 is equal to minus 3 okay 
the direction ratios of BC is nothing but 5 minus 1 minus minus 1 equal to 6 8 minus minus 2 is equal to 10 7 minus minus 1 equal to 7 minus 1 equal to 6 right so we have the direction ratios of BC as 6 10 and 6 note that B is a point which is common to both the lines so of course we can say that the direction ratios are proportional hence we can conclude, conclude that a b and b c either be collinear or be parallel right but b is a common point so hence the only possibility is a b c are three collinear points since the direction ratios are proportional because direction ratio of a b is equal to sorry minus 2 into direction ratio of a b is equal to direction ratio of b c right See, if we multiply each component by minus 2, we get the direction ratios of BC, which means that these two direction ratios are proportional. That is what we are telling. That, that's why we are telling that the points A, B, C are either be collinear or be parallel to or be in the parallel line. But there is a problem. B is common point to both lines, which means that these three points must lie on the same line as it is of the form A, B, C. So, B is a common point. So, we cannot say that these three points are lying in the parallel lines. We must say that these three points are lying on the same line since B is a common point and the direction ratios are proportional. Hence, we can say that these three points are collinear. Now, we shall move to the last question of this exercise. So, the last question is find the direction ratio cosines of the sides of the triangle whose vertices are so we are given with a triangle whose vertices are 3 5 minus 4 3 5 minus 4 minus 1 1 2 minus 1 1 2 and at the last minus 5 minus 5 2 minus 5 minus 5 minus 2 sorry so we have to find the direction cosines of a triangle whose vertices are 3 5 minus 4 minus 1 1 2 minus 5 minus 5 minus 2 so we shall check how we can do this here in order to find the direction ratios of the sides of the triangle direction cosines of the sides of the triangle first of all we have to find the direction ratios of the sides the sides so let me name it as a b c so obviously the direction ratios of the side a b is equal to see a b is this line segment so we can easily find the direction ratio of a b as minus 1 minus 3 minus 4 1 minus 5 minus 4 2 minus minus 4 6 right now we can find the direction ratio of the line a c a c the direction ratio of the line a c is nothing but minus 5 minus 3 minus 8 minus 5 minus 5 minus 5 minus 5 is minus 10 and at last minus 2 minus minus 4 equal to minus 2 plus 4 is equal to 2 minus 2 minus minus 4 is nothing but minus 2 plus 4 is equal to 2 now the direction ratios of the line bc is equal to direction ratio of the line bc is equal to minus 5 minus minus 1 equal to minus 5 plus 1 is equal to minus 4 minus 5 minus 1 equal to minus 6 again minus 2 minus 2 equal to minus 4 so these are the direction ratios of the sides of the triangle correspondingly so we found a b a c and b c the direction ratios of three line segment has been found now we can easily find out direction cosines of the line segments so direction cosines of the line ac is nothing but first of all we are going to find the direction cosines of the line ac the direction ratio of the okay first of all we can find the direction cosines of the line ab here the direction ratios are given as minus 4 minus 4 and 6 if we are given with a b c as the direction ratios then we know that we can easily find the direction 
cos size uh, the direction cos size by the formula a by root of a square plus b square plus c square b by root of a square plus b square plus c square c by root of a square plus c b square plus c square right so we can directly apply these things here so the first direction cos size l is equal to minus 4 divided by square root of minus 4 square plus minus 4 square plus 6 square m is equal to minus 4 divided by again square root of minus 4 square plus minus 4 square plus 6 square and last n is equal to 6 by square root of minus 4 square plus minus 4 square plus 6 square right so the answer is so in the denominator we have this root we can find this separately square root of minus 4 the whole square plus minus 4 the whole square plus 6 square we can take 2 square out of the common so 2 root when we take 2 out of this it will become 2 square which is 4 when we take 2 out of this this will become 2 square and it will become 4 when we take 2 out of 6 we get 3 square sorry 2 into 3 so 3 square out of it so we have 9 itself so 2 root 4 plus 4 is nothing but 8 plus 9 equal to root 17 so the answer is root 17 here so 2 root 17 2 root 17 again here the answer will become 2 root 17 here also the answer will become 2 root 17 17 now coming on to the direction cosines of the line second line is ac so ac ac we have l is equal to first of all we can find the square root of this thing right so that we can easily uh, substitute that value to the denominator so in order to find the direction cosines of the line ac we have square root of minus 8 the whole square plus minus 10 the whole square plus 2 square in the denominator right we can take 2 square out of the square root so it will become 2 root when we take 2 out of 8 it, the rest is 4 square which is 16 plus when we take 2 out of 10 then the balance is 5 so here we have 5 square which is 25 and when we take 2 square out of 2 square it will the rest is 1 only so we have 2 root 25 plus 16 is 41 so 41 plus 1 42 2 root 42 will be the denominator so the direction cosines of a b and the ac is equal to minus 8 by 2 root 42 m is equal to minus 10 by 2 root 42 and finally n is equal to 2 by 2 root 42 of course you can minimize this Cancelling 2 out of all this. Uh, here also you can minimize this direction cosines by cancelling 2 from numerator and a denominator. That's okay. Now finally the direction cosines of the line BC. So the denominator we can first of all we are going to find the denominator which is square root of minus 4 square plus minus 6 square plus minus 4 square which is equal to square root of 16 plus 36 plus 16 right we can take 2 square 4 out of common for 2 from all which becomes 2 root 17 here also so the denominator is 2 root 17 so the direction cosines are l is equal to minus 4 by 2 root 17 m is equal to minus 6 by 2 root 17 and finally n is equal to minus 4 by 2 root 17 so the direction cosines of the sides of the triangle are respectively for the side AB we have the direction cosines like this for the side AC we have the direction cosines like this and finally for the side BC we obtained the direction cosines like this so I hope you understood these things very well I hope you can now uh, solve problems from this section very easily and if you have any doubt just contact me and uh, study well we are going to in enter into the deeper section of three dimension geometry from next class onwards so till then bye bye stay tuned for the next class